All right, in this video, we're going to look at something called truth tables. Let's take a look at this statement here, P and Q. Remember, and is the upside down V. So P and Q is true only when both P and Q are true. Otherwise, it's considered false. So we make up a table to show all the possibilities. And I'm going to put the possibilities that P can be. They can either be true or false. Why I'm doing this, you'll see in a minute. And then Q, of course, can be either true or false as well. Now, the reason I've done the table this way is it allows me to list all four different possibilities for P and Q. So, or doing this by a certain organization, in my first column, I do half trues and then half falses. In the column next to it, I alternate true and false. This way, you can see that I go through all four different possibilities for true and false for P and Q. Now what we do then is we draw another column for P and Q, and this is the table you're going to want to keep to memory. Remember, P and Q is only true for those instances in which both P and Q are true. Otherwise, it is false. So in the second row here, so if that's my first row, second row, third row, fourth row. In my second row, that'll be false. In my third row, since one of them is false, the whole thing is false. And then in my last row, both being false results in a false. On the other hand, P or Q, remember that the V equals or, is true when either of P or Q is true, or both. So its table looks like this. Let me move this up a little bit. So once again, the pattern works like this. True, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. And then for P or Q, as long as one of the two is true, the whole thing is true. In fact, it's also true when they're both true. So it looks like this. My first three rows are all true, and the last row is false. These are the basic things you're going to want to keep track of as you're doing these truth tables. Then we have the truth table for negation. So if I only have a single statement, it could be either true or false on its own. Then not P switches these statements. Take a look at this then. If I wanted to do P and not P, then in the first row, I have a false, since one of them is false, and I also have a false in the second row. This should make sense. P and its negation should not both be true at the same time. On the other hand, if I try to do P or not P, here, no matter what, one of the two is always a true statement. So in both cases, we have true. Right now, suppose P is true and Q is false. Determine the truth of the following.
So A will have not P and Q. B will have P and not Q. C will have a not, not P, or not Q. For part A, we have not P and Q. Well, P is true, so we have not true, and Q is false. So this is false and false, which equals false. For part B, I have P and not Q. So P was true, and Q was false. So true and not false equals true and true, which we know to be a true statement. And then finally the last one, not, not P, or not Q. So I'm going to have not, let me put in parentheses then what I have. P was a true statement, so I have not true or not false. Let me work inside the parentheses first. In there then, I'm going to have false or true. Well, that equals true. And so this one ultimately ends up being false. This time, let P be true, but Q and R are both false. Determine the truth of Q or not R and P, not P and Q or not R, not R and not Q or not R and Q. For D, I have not P or Q and not P and Q. Let's start with the first one. So I like to give myself plenty of space for this. I'm going to have Q or not R and P. I usually follow that up with a full column because I'm not going to write this equals anything. It just I'm going to put their values next now. Now Q is false. R is also false. So well, let, me, let me put in the letters first. So I'm just going to substitute first and then we'll, we'll worry about what the things turn out to be. So inside of those parentheses, now I have false or true and true. False or true is true, so I have true and true, and that therefore equals true. Let's see, for part B, we have not P and Q or not R. As before, let me plug in my values. So P, that was a true statement. Q is a false statement. And R is a false statement. So this equals that not true is going to be false. So I'll have a false and false or true. And so therefore I have false or true and that equals true. For part C, if I can, oh, there it is, squiggle R, 
and squiggle Q or squiggle R and Q. All right, let's punch in our values. So I have not false, that's not R, and not false, or not false, and false. The not false has become true, so I have true and true inside of those parentheses. And then inside of the other ones, I have true and false. So this gives me true or false, which we know to be true. Where was D? Okay, so we have not P or Q. and not P and Q. So let's plug in our, our values. I'll keep wanting to say numbers, but they're actually just values. So we're going to have not. So I'm going to have P was true, Q was false, not P was true, Q is false, all right, so inside of those first parentheses, I have a true. And inside of the second parentheses, I have a false. So this gives me false and true. And we know that to be false. Here's another one. I'm going to let P equal the statement 16 is less than 8. And then Q is going to equal the statement 5 is not greater than 4. And then R is going to equal the statement 17 is less than or equal to 17. Before I go any further, let me write the truth or falseness of each one of these. For P, 16 is not less than 8, so that is definitely a false statement. In Q, 5 is actually greater than 4, so that's also a false statement. But R is a true statement. So from these, compute the following. So what if I try P or not Q? Well here, now that I have given them true and false values, I don't even need to know the statements anymore. So I can simply say that the P, I put a false in that spot, or Q is false. So I have false or true, and that is true. Not P, and not R. So we have not P was a false statement. R was a true statement. So we have true and false, which we know to be false. Moving on. Not P or, now in parentheses, we have not R or not Q. Let's put in our values. P was a false statement. R was true. Q is false. The not false becomes a true, and in these parentheses, I'll get a false or true. So we get true or true, which equals true. Not, I'm going to start a parenthesis, P or not Q or not R. Let me put in my values. P was false, Q is false, R was true. So inside the parentheses, you have false or true or false. In those parentheses then, false or true is true. And then I'll get false or false. And this was the only situation in which you had a falsity for the or was when they were both false.
Complete Truth Tables. When I was filling out the truth tables earlier, I used a certain number of rows and I had a rhyme or reason. I had four rows when I had a P and Q. I only had two rows when I had a P. The reason why that is the following. If I look at just a single statement, it can be either true or false. So there's only one, two rows if you only have one statement. However, if you have two statements, since each statement can be any of two values, then 2 times 2 is equal to 4. To capture all the possibilities between the two of these, you'll need four rows. And you can see the way I alternate the second column so that it accommodates the first column, and together they handle all four possible outcomes. What if you have three of them? P, Q, R. So P then, here's how we do. We do four trues and then four falses. So you always do that in the first one. You're going to need a total of eight rows for these true tables. And then the way you work the column for Q now, I do two trues, two falses, two trues, two falses, and then R will alternate. So what we have, one statement requires two rows. However, two statements require four rows. I'll give you a hint on how this is working. The two rows is equal to two to the one. The four rows is equal to two to the second. Three statements require eight rows. Or as you might guess, 2 raised to the third power. If you keep this up on and on, if I have a total of n statements, they're going to require 2 to the nth power rows. Truth tables are used for when you want to determine if statements or compound statements in particular are equivalent to each other. Let me show you how this process works. I want to draw a truth table for P and not Q and P. Now since I only have two statements here, I only need four rows. So the way this works is I do a P and then I'll do a Q and I'll list their possible values. And then the only other thing I see besides P and Q appearing there is a not Q. So I'm going to put its values right next to the Q. So in the in the first row, since Q is true, not Q is false. In the second row, since Q is false, not Q is true. And you can see this is just going to alternate then. False, true, false, true. Moving on. Now I'm going to start piecing this together. So I am going to take care of the first piece, P and not Q. So now I want to keep my eyes peeled on the column for P and the column for not Q. So first I'm going to look at this and this. Those two things, true and false, is false. Next I'll move on to this. True and true is true. 
false and false is false. False and true is false. And now we're ready to do P and not Q and P. So now you want to compare the column for P with this last column that we have. So take a look at row 1. In row 1 we have true for P but we have false for the other one and since it's an AND true and false is false. Moving on to the next one. Here we see we have true and true. That's true. False and false. That's false. False and false. That's false. So this here, this column, if you will, is considered the answer to the problem. So what we've done is given the truth value for every possible scenario that can happen between P and Q. These tables can get quite extensive, so drawing circles around the things that I want is not always going to be helpful. So with that in mind, this next one I'm going to try to do just by pointing out things and writing down their values and seeing if you can follow along. So let's construct the truth table. For here I'm going to have not P and not Q or not P or Q. So once again I only have two statements so I need a total of four rows. So I've got my P, Q. If you want you can label these. I don't care if that helps. Now it looks like throughout this I do have not P and not Q listed there so I might as well throw them in. Not P is going to reverse the values of all the P's. So this will be a false, false, true, true. Not Q will negate all the Q entries. So I'll have false, true, false, true. Now let's start constructing the pieces together. On the one parenthesis I have not P and not Q. So I'm going to look at these last two columns that I created. I have false and false is false. False and true is false. True and false is false. True and true is true. Now then I'm going to do not P or Q. So now you got to try to follow along with me in the table. Let's see where my not P is. There's not P, so I'm looking at this column here and this column right here. So I'm going to have true or false. We know that to be true. False or false is false. True or true is true. False or true is true. And now we're ready to put the whole thing together. So I have not P and a not Q or not P or Q. And so now I'm just looking at the last two columns here. Since this is an OR, as long as one of these values is true, the entire statement is true. So the only place where I had two false statements was there. Everywhere else I have true statements. And so this is the completed truth table. Construct a truth table for here I'm going to go three statements squiggle R or squiggle P and squiggle P 
or squiggle Q. So now you're going to need eight rows. P, Q, R. This can get kind of heavy, so we need to make sure that we take very good care of the table as we go. I'm not going to mark it up very much. I'm just going to hover the cursor over it as I do it. So you're going to need the first column will have four trues followed by four falses. I need to extend that line. And then Q goes true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. And then finally R alternates. Now what I need to construct next is all of the negations of these statements since they're all involved in this thing. So I'll do not P, not Q, not R. So just reverse those columns as needed. And I've got all those. Now let's start constructing the statement. First, I need to do not R or not P. Well, I need to keep track of the P and the, the not P and the not R column. So I have a false or false. That's false. Next, I have false or true, which is true. False or false. False false or true, true, true or false, true, true or true, true, true or false, true, true or true, true. And then I want to do not P or not Q. So here, oh, that's nice. They're right next to each other. Now it's, it, the only, it might make it easier on you if you know that when you're dealing with an or, as long as one of them's true, you're going to get a true statement. So I can see that I'm going to have falses for the, for the first two, but then I'm going to have true, 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 true. And now we're ready to do the entire statement. So we have not R or not P and not P or not Q. So the way I constructed it, I just have to pay attention to these last two columns. And since this is an and, the only time it's going to be true are when these both of these columns are true. So false and false gives me a false. True and false gives me a false. False and true gives me a false. And then I have a bunch of trues all the way throughout the rest of the problem. So the first three rows are false and the rest of them are true. And there is my completed truth table. Next we come to De Morgan's Laws. I mentioned them earlier, but this is where we're going to start working with them. If I have the negation of an AND, it becomes the negation of one statement or the negation of the other statement. The way that you can check to see that this is actually a true, is actually a true equa equality is we can put our P, Q here. So I get my true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. Now let's take a look at P and Q. So the only time I'm going to get a true is when both P and Q are true. So I get a true and three falses. And now look at squiggle P and Q. So the column I just did, I'm going to negate every single one of those statements. 
So I get a false followed by three trues. Now compare that to not P or not Q. Well, in order to do that, I'm going to erase this for now, and I am going to put not P, not Q. So not P, that'll be false, false, true, true. Not Q will be false, true, false, true. And then not P or not Q. That'll be false, true, true, true. And then take a look then at these two columns. This is the column here. And the other column is here. If you look in every single case, they have trues and true and falses in exactly the same places. So this proves that they're equal to each other. So that's one of De Morgan's laws. A second De Morgan law goes like this. If I start the negation of a P or Q, that's going to equal the negation of P and the negation of Q. And it would prove that that is true. We'll do exactly the same thing I just did. And I might as well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my not P and my not Q in there immediately. And now I'll start constructing the pieces. P or Q, that would be false. I'm sorry, I, I'm looking at the wrong columns. I need to look at the first two columns. So I'm going to have true, 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 false. And then the negation of that, not P or Q, would be false, 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 true. Now we're going to compare that with not P and not Q. So for those, where are those columns? Not P and not Q, these two columns here. And since it's an and, I'm only going to have a truth in this one situation at the end. All the other ones will be false. So now if you take a look at this column and the one right next to it, they have exactly the same entries. So this proves that equation as well. So let's write these up. De Morgan's laws. If I have not P and Q, that'll equal not P or not Q. So that switched an and to an or. And then the other one was not P or Q became not P and not Q. Q. So an OR becomes an AND. Consider now how we can apply this to phrases written in English. So let me give you a, a, a statement. I am not going or she is going. So here we can see that it's a, it's what they call a compound statement. It has our or here. Now suppose I wanted to take the negation of that. So if I want to take the negation of that, and let me put this there. What happens then is this becomes not I am not going and not she is going. 
I'm not sure exactly why I have the parentheses still. I need to get rid of it there. And so now I can finish it off. I am not going. The negation of that is I am going. And I'll put the word back. She is not going. There's your negation. Try another one. Let's suppose I have one half is greater than zero and negative nine is less than zero. So if I take the negation of that statement, I go and change this to not one half is greater than zero or not negative nine is less than zero. Remember we talked about this one before. The first one becomes one half is less than or equal to zero or negative nine is greater than or equal to zero. By the way, even though this is the negation, I wasn't asked to find the truth of it. The fact is both parts of this are actually false. So the truth value of this last uh, sentence is false.